Welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk to you about all the books that I read in April. There are five of them as you can see and as per usual I will just give you a quick sort of overview of what the book is about and then tell you my thoughts on it. Usually when I do wrap ups or any kind of video I have sort of something prepared, not necessarily everything all scripted out but I, I usually have a list of a couple of things that I want to say but occasionally I like to do a video which is just kind of off the cuff and no real preparation because I feel like that also brings me things that scripted videos don't necessarily bring me. So if at any point during this video I'm rambling or just talking nonsense or not making my point very well, then that's why. I don't remember the exact order in which I read these books, but I think the first one I read is this one, The Princess Saves Herself in this one by Amanda Lovelace. This is a poetry collection. It's from the same publishing company called Andrews McNeil Publishing that also did Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur, which is why it looks quite similar in just kind of the general layout. It, it it's also kind of the same material. Because these two books look quite similar and because there is quite an overlap in the style of the poems, I think it's quite easy to just kind of compare these two books to each other and leave it at that. But I actually do think that there are quite a few differences. For me, this one is much more personal. It's much more of a, a sort of an exploration of Amanda Lovelace's inner workings, her sort of stuff that she's going through, whereas I think Milk and Honey is much more of a, a general sort of view on like the world and feminism and there is a lot of personal stuff in there but it, it serves the bigger picture whereas this I think is more of a, a very small kind of intimate journey that the author goes on. I like this poetry collection a lot. It didn't touch me as much as Milk and Honey did because that was like explosions happening in my brain and this book didn't necessarily do that but I still loved it a lot. I read most of this collection um, in sort of public spaces like on the train to and from work and to and from band rehearsal and because it's quite personal and quite emotional there were a few moments where I was sort of on the verge of tears and had to stop reading because I was afraid that I was gonna like have a full meltdown in front of everybody. I also read All the Birds in the Sky by Charlie Jane Anders, which I borrowed from Aeth and she bought it because I recommended it to her, so it's kind of coming full circle. This book to me is a really cool blend of fantasy and sci-fi, kind of embodied by the two main characters. There is Patricia who at a very young age discovers that she has certain magical powers, mostly related to nature. And there is Lawrence who is um, a genius basically, he's kind of like a, a prodigy in terms of computer stuff. The story starts when they are both children, they're in the same school, but the, most of the actual plot takes place in, I think it's a near future version of our society. There's a lot of natural disasters happening, the earth has become very polluted and it's basically starting to become uninhabitable. Both sort of factions that um, Lawrence and Patricia belong to are working in their own way to um, to save humanity, to help the planet, to, to make the situation better, basically. I first heard about this book because one of my co-workers, who was actually the buyer for the sci-fi and fantasy section, recommended this to me. He was like, I think this is something you are going to enjoy. So it's been on my radar for quite a while. I've wrapped it as a blind book date as well, occasionally, so I'm I had a passing familiarity with the plot before I started reading it. That said, I like this book, but I didn't love it as much as I thought I would. I felt like a lot of it was very promising, a lot of it was very good, but in the end, it just didn't really come together as much as I had hoped it would, and the end of the story especially left me feeling very unsatisfied. I do have a sneaking suspicion that it might have something to do with just not being the right time for me to read this book, so I do want to try it again sometime in the future, maybe next year or something. In April I also read The Boy on the Bridge, you can't see because it's an arc edition so the title is over here. The Boy on the Bridge by M. R. Carey which is um, kind of a prequel to The Girl with All the Gifts by M. R. Carey which I enjoyed very much. Like I said this is an arc edition, an advanced reader's copy. Um, 
The actual release, I think, is this month, so it might just have appeared or else it's going to appear very soon. I really, really enjoyed The Girl With All The Gifts when I read it, and when I heard that there was going to be another book set in the same universe, I was very excited for it. So there's been a bit of confusion about this, um, but this book is definitely a prequel to The Girl With All The Gifts. It's set in the same universe and it's I think 10 to 15 years before the events of The Girl With All The Gifts. I'll try not to say too much because I don't want to spoil The Girl With All The Gifts for anyone who hasn't read it, but if you've read that book you will remember that there is a lot to do about this sort of vehicle called the Rosalind Franklin or Rosie. And this book is about the original crew of the Rosie, so who they are, how they ended up there, what happens to them. I felt like the style of this book was very similar to The Girl With All The Gifts, so if you like that then you will probably also like this and if you like the girl with all the gifts you're definitely going to love the epilogue of this book it made me cry a lot the final two books that i want to talk about are books that i read during the readathon of kings for which i was one of the hosts if you've seen my recent videos then you will know that sort of that period of the readathon was a very weird emotional time for me if you haven't seen them just to quickly catch you up um immediately before the start of the readathon as well as during the first two days, I was at home at my parents' place because uh, my grandmother was really ill and um, she ended up passing away on what was the second day of the readathon. So obviously I wasn't all there, sort of. I wasn't completely present and I did not necessarily have the brain space to completely focus on reading. On the other hand, it was also a really nice distraction to be able to um, dive into my TBR. I also hosted some reading sprints on the Twitter account, which, which was just really nice and really good. And people were very supportive. I got a lot of nice comments and nice messages after my last two videos. So thank you to everyone who sort of took time out of their day to, to make me feel better, thank you. Anyway, the first book I read during the readathon is Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood. This is only the second Margaret Atwood book that I've ever read. The first one was Hagseed, so I'm, I'm doing this all wrong and out of order, but I love it. This is a book that I bought a couple of years ago for a contemporary lit course that I was taking in university. I didn't end up reading it then. I think it was the very first book of the course and I started it, but I just didn't have the time to finish it. So this book is about Grace Marks, who is a young girl of Irish descent who moves to Canada with her family when she is quite young. At the immediate start of the book, we find out that she's been convicted of two murders, her former employer and one of her sort of co-workers, she works as a maid, as a servant girl. And throughout the book we sort of learn the whole story uh, from her point of view but also from other people's perspectives and from like newspaper articles and stuff like that. What I think is the most interesting thing about this book is that the question of what truly happened is never answered because nobody is completely objective. I feel like you're given enough information and enough hints to make up your mind about what you think the events were but there is definitely enough sort of blank space to, um, I don't know, to, to sort of play around with it and to, to construct your own version of the story. Finally, during the Readathon of Kings, I read My Life Had Stood a Loaded Gun by Emily Dickinson, which is a poetry collection. I usually quite enjoy Emily Dickinson's poems. I read quite a lot of them in university and they were always kind of my favourites because I, I understood her poems, but this collection just didn't really do it for me. I don't know if it's just the selection of poems that are in here that just aren't really my cup of tea, or if it's because I wasn't in the right sort of frame of mind. I don't know, it just didn't, ugh, it was kind of a chore to read it, and the only reason I finished it was because I really wanted to finish something in the readathon. Obviously, I also wasn't in sort of my best state of mind, so, that might have had something to do with my experience reading this book. That said, I think I'm going to try again in the future and I think I'm going to read them just one at a time and then maybe look up some background information about the poem, maybe read someone else's analysis and just kind of have a more in-depth approach because I now I was just reading them um, one after the other and I feel like that's not necessarily the best approach for this kind of poetry. So these are all the books that I read in April. Overall, despite the massive hiccup at the end of the month, which I totally do not blame myself for because I have bigger fish to fry, 
um, I think I did really well. I really enjoyed most of the books that I read this month and that is always the goal for me because there is so much that I want to read and I just know that I'm not going to get to all of it in my lifetime. So picking out the ones that I think I'm going to like best is always the challenge. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you again next time.